Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. Today we're going to be showing you how to build the FT Commuter. Now if you haven't seen the FT Commuter, it's an awesome collaboration with a community member named Ben Harbour. The Cessna 150M was also a really great source of many happy memories with both Ben and his grandfather as a young child. Ben wanted to honor his grandfather by making a copy of the original plane that he had so many fond memories with, and he was kind enough to share those plans and that design as well. We went ahead and took that original design, we did a couple tweaks just to kind of lower the part count and make the build process a little bit easier. Matter of fact, if you can build this, you can build any one of our planes within the Swappable series. We're really excited to bring this design to you guys and also show you how easy and quickly it can be built and flown. Now if you guys want to support us by going to our store, you can get a speed build kit, a power pack A, and all the electronics that you need to have a great experience. This is also a phenomenal FPV platform if you really want to buzz around and feel like you're right in the cockpit. And as always, we will have free downloadable plans, and if you're reading those plans, black will be cut through, red will be score cut, and blue will be etched. Let's go get our materials in order, and we'll get started. We're going to go ahead and start with the power pod. Now this power pod is similar to all of our Mighty Mini power pods, but what you will notice here is that every power pod on the Mighty Mini series oftentimes will have a little bit of a thrust angle. In this case, we're always going to mount our firewall on the area that the A points to. So in this case, it's going to be this one right here. Sometimes the thrust angle will be quite significant. Sometimes it'll be barely noticeable or not there at all. Just always make sure that you recognize this front area is where our firewall is going to go. Let's go ahead and weed out our foam. It's really important that you make sure you don't cut through the paper on the other side. And now we'll do a little practice A-fold. A-fold is where the side plates are above the bottom plate. So we're going to keep our side plate firmly against the table as we rotate our bottom plate up 90 degrees. Once you're happy with the way everything fits, we can go ahead and open it up. We're going to go ahead and put a bead of glue favoring the bottom of the side plate, starting and stopping a quarter inch from the edge. Give yourself about 45 seconds to let the glue thoroughly dry. Once the glue is dry, go ahead and do the same process on the other side, favoring that glue on the bottom of the side plate, folding up 90 degrees, and giving yourself roughly 45 seconds to dry. Now that our main power pod is built, we're going to go ahead and glue our firewall on. Now with our firewall, if the firewall is facing you, you're going to have the hole on the bottom right hand corner. We're going to be using our FT Radio 1806. It's also going to be the motor that will in the very near future be included with our Power Pack A. Once we're happy with the fit and we've also confirmed that the firewall is on the side that the A is pointing to, we're going to lay a nice healthy bead on all three sides of our power pod. Be really careful during the steps to make sure you don't burn your fingers. We're going to simply lay this right on top, press it down, and we can even come back with a little piece of scrap, wipe off any residual. Let this dry a good minute before you touch it. So our next step is we're going to go ahead and take some simple packing tape, we're going to rip off a little under six inches, and we're going to favor the tape right on the very top edge. As we push down, we're going to let that tape roll on each side, kind of putting it under pressure. Flatten out the sides, and I like to cut reliefs on each side and fold down one side at a time, kind of like we're wrapping a gift. This is an incredibly important process that you don't want to neglect and you don't want to skimp on because this is really what holds your firewall in place and gives it its strength. Now that the firewall is on, it's really important that we just take a razor blade and that we open up all of our holes. The center section here, make sure you open up completely so that your prop shaft or your motor doesn't bind against it. Last, we'll go ahead and open up our little pathway for our motor wires. All right, let's go ahead and put our power pod to the side and build our fuselage. We're going to need the following pieces. We're going to have our main fuselage body. We're going to have our top cowling. We're going to have our interior power pod holder. We're going to have the top rear portion of our fuselage. And we're also going to have our front and back windows. Now, each one of these pieces, we need to go ahead and remove foam from certain areas. And we're going to go ahead and do that right now. What I'd strongly encourage you to do is follow along with me, but also, once I've weeded out these pieces, pause your video, carefully study it, and make sure your pieces look just like mine. It's really important that you make sure you don't cut through the paper on the other side. By pre-cutting all of your pieces, it allows the foam to be able to release from the paper easily and give you a nice clean edge. Get as close as you possibly can, and a nice tip is to dull the tip of your razor blade so it can't cut the paper. You can do that with a sanding block or just drag the tip on a piece of concrete. Now that we have all the pieces prepped, let's go ahead and go piece by piece through each piece to make sure it looks just like yours. 
Our main fuselage, we went ahead and weeded out these pieces here. We carved out our main cavity for the fuselage top plate. We also cut reliefs in for the, where the windshield is gonna go. Along with that, we also went ahead and removed the paper. And then also each one of these little grooves here had a piece removed just so it seems together even nicer. After that, we went to our top cowling. And that was very simple. We went ahead and just released the piece right in the front and also on each side here. On our power pod holder, we opened up the two cavities and popped out the additional pieces that we need for the center plate. For our top rear part of the fuselage, we went ahead and took away the foam on both side edges and also made sure that our front cavity was clear. For our windshield, we went ahead and removed the foam from our two outer pieces, but we will be doing bevel cuts on the inside later. Same goes with this piece, but there's no outer fold. If your pieces look just like this, you're ready to move on to the next step and build the fuselage. So now that we have our pieces taken care of, I'm gonna go ahead and put all these to the side here and I'm gonna put all my focus on this main fuselage piece. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is take our barbecue skewer and we're gonna go ahead and drag that barbecue skewer right on the edges, just like you see here. We're gonna go ahead and do a practice fold. Now this is technically a B fold, but I didn't call it a B fold on paper because I want people to really put a lot of attention into how these pieces fold right here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate this up 90 degrees and we're gonna make sure the side plate of our fuselage is beside the bottom plate. We're also going to notice here that this is going to get a very nice curve right here. That's exactly what we want, but I want you to focus mainly on making sure this stays at 90 degrees. Wherever this flows is going to be just fine, and you'll see why in a second. Once we've gone ahead and we moved that a couple times, we have a nice tight seam in this area. I'm going to go ahead and place a nice bead right on the very bottom here. I only want to put enough just to be able to glue it together. I'm not too worried about putting too much glue on there. More glue doesn't make more strength. Then we're right back up to 90 degrees. And we're gonna hold this for about 45 seconds. I like to sing you are my sunshine in your head. Notice that we didn't put any glue on the two seams that we have because we want that to stay somewhat fluid until we get our additional pieces up. We're all done with one side. We're gonna do the exact same process on the other. I oftentimes will do the same fold and the same move a couple different times looking at different angles each time just to make sure that everything is nice and square and I'm happy with where it's sitting. Always make sure also that you're pushing firmly against the table so everything is flat. All right, we're gonna focus the tip of our nozzle. Notice that I'm kind of favoring between the paper and the foam. Get a nice sealed edge. And we're gonna hold this for about 45 seconds. All right, so we have our two pieces here. And before we move on, we're gonna go ahead and put our attention towards our top plate that you see right here. This is gonna be what gives our fuselage a nice square true edge, but also it's gonna help us guide our push rods. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to this seam right here. We're gonna open it up and we're gonna cut a double bevel. With our double bevel, we wanna make sure that we don't go through the paper in the center. We wanna keep it just above and at about a 45 degree angle. Now, if you do accidentally cut through the paper, don't worry, just repair it with a piece of tape. There we go. Our next step is we're gonna make sure that this cracks open nice and clean. All right, so our next step, we're gonna fit the tab of the fuselage right into the slot of the bottom plate. And just for a quick test fit, we're gonna go ahead and slide this down where the paper meets the back of the window. You're gonna notice that this is greater than a 90 degree angle and that's exactly what we want. Once we're happy with the fit, we're gonna go ahead and take our hot glue gun and we're gonna place glue from one end right at the seam here all the way to the far side by our tab. Let's do that on both sides. Same motion as before, right down in the fuselage. And then we're gonna push against the table while pushing it together. We're gonna give ourselves about 45 seconds and we'll move on to the next step. So before we made this little door here, and this is the reason why, we're gonna go ahead and take our push rod, we're gonna guide it right through the hole. Notice that my Z-bend is pointing forward. We're gonna guide it back, and I'm just gonna put a slight bend on my push rod to allow it exit the back of the fuselage right here. We're gonna do that on both sides. And all we simply need to do is just kind of use our thumb and our finger to kind of give it a slight bend. It'll pop right through. Now that we're happy with this, we're gonna go ahead and press this down just for one quick test fit to make sure we're happy with it. And once everything fits down nice and clean, go ahead and open this up. 
And just to give this a little bit extra rigidity, I'm gonna do one stripe right down each side. And then I'll do one stripe right on the top plate. Notice that I'm not worried and I'm not hurrying. The Apex Pro 200 keeps the glue nice and hot. There we go. Once we're happy with that fit, we're gonna take it to the table. We're gonna take it right to the edge, make the table our friend, and hold that for about 45 seconds. Yep. Okay. Now that we have our main fuselage piece, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our barbecue skewer again, and we're gonna just put light creases on all four edges. And a common theme to this is every time we do something, we're always gonna just kind of mold it and make sure it fits and that we're happy with it. Once we fold this up, you'll notice that the bottom crease will give us a nice angle to move forward. What we want to do is we want to focus on one side at a time, getting a nice clean alignment. Focus mostly on your top edge here, and if you get that perfect, everything else will fall into place. To make this step a little bit easier, I'm using my pointer finger here just to kind of be able to lift up so when I get this into place, I can put a little bit of up pressure and keep it in place while it dries. Now that we have that motion, I'm going to focus a nice medium to heavy bead of glue right on the top here, all the way up. Same process as before, just letting that paper slightly overlap the other edge so none of the glue squeezes through the front but the back. And we're going to hold this for about 45 seconds and we're going to do the same process on the other side. Alright, one side is dry, same process on the other side. Nice bead right up to the top. And we're going to hold it for another 45 seconds. So now that you've done one step, you're going to know exactly what we're going to need to do for the next two, if not three steps. Simple crush down those edges. I kind of like to fold it up a little bit. Do a quick practice fold. Always focus on right down that top seam here. Everything else will fall into place. Do it on both sides, make sure we're happy. And then we'll glue it in place. Notice I'm not putting glue inside the seams here and here. It's plenty strong being compressed the way it is, and it'll really keep the weight down. Same process on the other side. Quick test fit. Healthy bead of glue. Line up the top edge and hold for 45 seconds. Notice if you take your time how nice and clean all these seams are. When you paint this later, it's going to be a nice solid looking fuselage. So for this next one here, we're going to go ahead and just give this a little bit more of an extreme bend because it's going to start cupping up a little bit more. And then we're going to follow with the exact same process as before. I'm just going to go ahead and go through both of these here. Save a step in a second. And plus, it's going to be really hard to get the second one down on the table once we've done it. Never neglect, even though if everything's going to good, always do a test fit first. It's going to be really tempting for you just to kind of run with it. But you'll be amazed just with the muscle memory going back in the same spot every time. How much better it'll look, but also how much more stress and easier it's going to be. Notice that now our fuselage is not only tapering up, but it's also tapering in. Alright, same process on the other side. The last one here, we're going to have most of our bend. So we're just going to go ahead and take one side at a time. Again, I'm using the pointer finger here to kind of give myself a little bit of forward pressure. And once we're happy with that, we'll glue her down. So this one, it's not just as important to hold the sides in, but also to keep a little bit of up pressure here so it doesn't put a little stress on that. All right, same process on the other side. All right, a little bit of glue. And in the course of maybe about five or 10 minutes, you have built the whole main structure of a fuselage. So now our main fuselage piece is now done. We're gonna go ahead and put our attention towards the internal structure that's gonna hold the power pod. So we can go ahead and put this aside just for a moment 
and we're going to grab the two pieces that we see here and here. So you're going to notice that this piece is marked with an A-fold. The A-fold is where the bottom or the top plate is above the side plates. To get a proper fold for an A, we're going to go ahead and leave the side plate firmly against the table, and we're going to rotate the bottom plate up 90 degrees. Once we're happy with that, we'll go ahead and face most of the glue on the top surface of the bottom plate. Rotate 90 degrees and hold it for about 45 seconds. It's really important that this bottom plate here is firmly against the table so you have a nice tight seam, but also that it's not crooked. All right, one side is done. We're gonna go ahead and try the other side. We're gonna rotate the bottom plate 90 degrees up against the table to get the shape that we want. A little bit of glue. And we're gonna hold this position for about 45 seconds. All right, so now that we have our piece here, we're simply gonna go ahead and just kind of rotate this piece in. Just open up this a little bit and press it into place. A little bit of reinforcement with a bead of glue on both sides. And we can take a scrap piece of foam and smooth it out. Now that this piece is dry, we're gonna go ahead and cut a single bevel on both sides that you see here. We're gonna do this about a 45 degree angle, making sure our fingers are nice and clear from the blade. There's one side. Here's the second side. All right, at this point we're ready to go ahead and give this a test fit here. You're gonna see immediately when we put this down in place exactly why we cut that bevel cut. You're gonna notice that the side plates of the power pot holder nestle really nicely against the fuselage once we cut that angle in. To give you an index mark of where we wanna glue this, you're gonna see the very front edge of our hatch right here. You're also gonna notice that the crease of where the windshield is and the edge of the power pot holder are also gonna line up. As long as you're happy with the fit and it's firmly down against the fuselage, we're gonna put a bead of glue on each side of the bevel. Flip it over. Get our reference mark. And we're gonna hold it in place for about 45 seconds. Once our power pod holder is down, we're gonna go ahead and put our attention towards the top of the cowling. So we're gonna make sure that this seam here it's nice and open. Once again, we don't want to go through the paper. And we're going to lift up one side at a time, and we're going to cut a single bevel on the inside surface here. There's one. And there's two. Same process on the other side. Flip it open. So I can kind of use it when I push it away. I can just use a little sign motion. We'll get me the same results. And one more bevel cut right on the center section. All right, while we're doing our bevel cuts, we're gonna go ahead and do one more bevel cut. And it's gonna be a little bit awkward here, so take your time and make sure that you do it right. We're gonna go ahead and cut a bevel cut right on the edge here, but we're not gonna go ahead and cut all the way down to the paper. There may be a little bit more additional trimming we need to do when we finally glue this in place because every plant's going to be a little bit different. But this will give us a really good starting point. Notice on these small pieces, you can kind of use it just like a little saw blade and pop these pieces off. This is going to be covered, so don't worry if it's a jagged edge or doesn't look pretty. It's really all about the fit that you get when you glue it down on the fuselage. So I'm just kind of tearing that away just a little bit. All right, go ahead and pause the video if you need to. 
but make sure that your piece looks similar to what you see right here. All right, one little step I'm gonna do before finishing it is I'm just gonna pull these guys in because we have a slight little bend that we're gonna to have to line it up. Now we're gonna take our top cowling piece, we're gonna lay it right over, and this piece should line up nice and tight against the top plate of our power pod holder. If you take a look at where each angle changes, you're gonna notice that when it's folded down, it's gonna line up with the seams of our fuselage. That's gonna be a good indicator that you're lined up properly and ready to go on to the next step. Once you're happy with the alignment, we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of glue right down on the top, you don't have to put a lot. And we're gonna go right back to what we did before. Checking to make sure that we're centered and that our seams align on both the left and the right side. So this is the one point where everyone's model is gonna be just a little bit different, but you have this indexed right and you have this condition. So when you fold this down, you know exactly what you need to remove on each side. The next step here is that we're gonna carefully go ahead and continue beveling very carefully until we have a nice flush seam right on the edge. The additional little bit of paper you have here is gonna hide your joints, so even if you're off a little bit, you don't have to worry, it's still gonna look wonderful. Go ahead and start with the side plates and then move on to the front plate. You may find that you have to do a little bit of beveling on this little piece right here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. We simply push down, kind of lift up under the paper, see what we gotta remove. We remove it and then we refit. Put a little bit of glue up here. Flip it over. What I like to do is just take a little scrap piece of foam. Notice I'm kind of using like a paintbrush wave, like I'm slowly moving it down, kind of pushing the paper down and away. It's gonna give us a nice tight seam that'll pretty much disappear once you paint it. Let's do the other side. This one's very close, just a little bit more on the top here. Our last joint here, just need a little bit of bevels. There, we left out there. If you take your time and concentrate on alignment, and then position, and then fit, and then work forward with that kind of concept through all the pieces, you're gonna see that it's not just gonna be nice, but it's gonna be really tight and very strong. All right, and just like we did before, we're gonna go ahead and fold the paper right down over, giving us a nice finished edge. Usually a 10 count, 15 seconds or so. All right, so our fuselage is mainly done, but now we're gonna go ahead and put our attention towards our servos and then our windshield. For all of our Mighty Minis, we're using the 9051 Flight Test Edition servos. These are gonna come with a lot of different servo arms, so I'm gonna show you which ones I prefer to use, and if you hook this up the way that I'm going to, you're not gonna to need to do any real throw adjustment when you hook up your radio. You get plenty of different servo arms. 
The one that I really like to focus on on the minis is this little four prong guy right here. For this one, we're gonna have two shorter and two longer. We wanna cut three sides only leaving one of the shorter lengths. So once you identify that, go ahead and cut off the opposite one. And this side here. I've already done one side, so what I wanna do, is I wanna hold up my servo on the other side, and I wanna place my servo arm so it's facing directly away from it. Now our servos do come pre-centered, so as long as you don't move them, you should be just fine. But if you do have a servo centering tool, I'd strongly recommend that you keep it handy because it's very easy for these to get moved. We're gonna put our little servo screw in. Our servo screw is the shortest screw that we have. Notice I'm kind of bracing the servo arm so it doesn't move. Now that we have our two servos, we don't wanna glue this in and glue it to the sticker. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the sticker, and then we can take some heavy grit sandpaper or a razor blade and we're going to scratch up the plastic surface. If you have slimy sticker material, it's a good idea to clean this with a little alcohol wipe just to make sure you have good adhesion. One of the reasons we really wanted you guys to put the power pod holder in and your top cowling is, is so you can see the room that you have. You can see for a mini, it has a lot of room in it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and find a location on each side of the fuselage that's gonna keep this from binding both going this way and also side to side. So the easiest way to do this is to install one of our servos. Again, if it moves at all, you can always use your servo centering tool to recenter it. There we go. And we're gonna slide it back. And you can see if we just naturally let the servo go, the wire is going to go to the relaxed position. At this point, all we need to do is worry about where we put this in. For me, I like to use this one seam right on the side of the fuselage to put the edge of the servo. What you don't want to do is you don't want to put the servo on two different angles so it doesn't get a good glue joint. Once you have identified where you want your servo to be, I just like to flip it over, put a nice healthy bead of glue, flip it around, and put it right back in its position. Now for this step, I'm gonna hold this for a good minute and a half because I don't want this not to dry firmly. Make sure that you hold this down, take your time, and don't move it until it's thoroughly dry. Same process on the other side. All right, with our servos in, we can go ahead and close in that area a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and put our attention towards the front of the wing here. Now the front of the wing, we're gonna have two different seams. We're gonna have the inner seam and the outer seam. This seam here, that's closest to this little notch where the leading edge goes, is gonna be the one that we're gonna to wanna to crack open. The second line here is just a reference line to give us an idea of where we wanna bevel it. It's not quite a 45 degree, so this is just a really good indicator of kind of where we wanna start. You may find, depending on your model, that you need to go a little bit further, a little bit less but this should give it just enough tightness to be able to give a really nice windshield. Go ahead and do this on both sides. So once we have that, we're gonna go ahead and do a quick test fit here to see how everything looks. If we did this right, what we should see is just on the very leading edge here, a nice seam, and as it goes down to the side, a nice tight fit. We also want to look to make sure this top plate on both sides is nice and flush. So once we're happy with that, before we glue it down, I'm going to open up these two seams. I'm just going to put a little drop of glue, maybe a half inch long, right in the center. I'm going to do that same motion again. <laughs> you can see that I actually squeezed a little bit through, cut through, so it's going to pop out on the other side. No big deal, we can wipe that off. So all I wanna do here is just hold this down where it's supposed to be and let it dry. Now that we're happy with the fit, we can go ahead and put our attention on the side plates all the way around to the bottom and then back up the side. So 
So while I'm holding this down, I'm just going to go around with a little scrap piece of foam. If you guys haven't noticed yet, it's always good to keep a bunch of little scrap pieces around because sometimes I'll just spring that on you. And I'm just going to go ahead and wipe that nice and smooth. And if I have to, I can even use the foam as a little bit of a heat barrier to get a nice tight seam on both sides. All right, that's the front windshield. Let's go ahead and do the same process now on the back windshield. The outer bevel. Then use that score line as a nice indicator. Okay, so you're going to notice something here that I'm going to flip this around, but you can see that this back plate here and also a little bit on the sides is kind of causing us an issue where it's popping up a little bit. We're first going to put our glue in and get our angle, but then what we're going to do is we're going to take our razor blade and then shave this portion until it's nice and flush. Drop here. It's always a good idea just to do one angle at a time, one position at a time, because that way Give it all your focus on making sure it's good. There we go. And now if we just kind of match the projection of this bottom line here and we keep our razor blade, just like a little saw in motion. All right, now that we have that bevel and we're happy with the fit, right on the sides, the bottom, and right back up. And we'll set it in place and hold it in position for about 45 seconds. And just to make this a little bit stronger, we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue on that seam. There's one seam. And here's two. Same process, 15 seconds or so, and then just kind of smear it under tension. All right, it's official. Your fuselage is now done. We're ready to move on to the next step, which is getting our tail surfaces all hooked up, and then we'll start building on our wings. To make this easy, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same process as before, getting my razor blade as close to the paper as possible without cutting through. Again, if you do cut through, don't worry. You can simply repair it with a piece of tape. I'm going to go ahead and use the table as my friend here, just not to put any extra pressure on this area here. Now, typically, we cut a bevel cut on the elevator side, but because this area is so thin, we're going to go ahead and do it on the stabilizer side just to keep the strength. Keeping our blade at past a 90 degree angle, we're going to go ahead and drag it through, getting it as close to the paper as possible without going through. We're going to want about a 45 degree angle Notice that right when I get to the end, I'm just going to use a little bit of a sawing motion so I don't cut through the counterbalance. I can turn this around, do the same process on the other side. Always look ahead of the blade to make sure that you don't cut into your hands because it's very difficult to cut away from yourself. It's always easier to cut across or use the table as your friend. A good indicator that you have a nice bevel cut is that it'll move freely both up and down. If it doesn't move freely, go ahead and reinspect your area, and most likely you have a little bit of a thick area by where one of the uh, seams is. That looks good. Let's go ahead and do the same process now for the rudder. For the rudder, we're going to go ahead and put our bevel cut on the rudder itself, not the vertical stabilizer. go. Just a little bit tight here, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of 
take my razor blade, curl both sides in just a little bit. There we go. All right, it spins freely both ways. So for a hot glue hinge, we're gonna go ahead and focus our nozzle right at the paper seam. And I'm gonna go ahead and just press a little bead of glue, just a thin ribbon right down in there. And then immediately I'm gonna follow up with a piece of foam and I'm gonna use it kind of like a paintbrush and just push it right down into the foam into the paper. What this is going to do is the hot glue is going to penetrate the foam and the paper and make one solid seam so it won't delaminate in the future. Give this a good 45 seconds to dry before you move it because if you move it prematurely it could glue your control surfaces back shut. There's one. We'll do the same process on the other side here. Same process on the rudder. Then a little bit of piece of glue. You can always practice this on a scrap piece of foam if you're worried about the first time around. But this will be a common technique that you use in all of our planes just to make them last longer. Our next step is we're gonna go ahead and combine the elevator and the rudder together. With our hinge line facing down towards the table, we're gonna go ahead and put the vertical stabilizer through the tab on the top. We can go to the bottom, rotate it. Now would be a really good time to go ahead and glue our horizontal and our vertical stabilizers together. Now unfortunately during our move recently, I cannot find our triangle or our square. I'm just gonna go ahead and use our firewall from our Monster Series motor and use that as a square. This is going to be a really good idea to do this ahead of time because it's going to give it a stronger joint and be easier to put the whole piece inside the fuselage. All we simply need to do is a little bead on each side. And with a scrap piece of foam, we'll push it in. And we'll take our square and hold it for about 45 seconds. Bottom's a little bit easier. We're just going to go ahead and put a bead right down the center. And move it in place, aligning with the top piece. So if you guys hear in the background any banging, that is our Fab Lab getting built. Now with our pieces glued together, we're going to go ahead and just pinch this bottom edge here so it trails right into the piece that we need very easily. Let's go ahead and take our fuselage. And we're going to carefully align this up. We may just kind of have to gently lift up on the rear part of the fuselage to allow this to slide in. And then we're going to gently push it into place until it stops. Now would be a really good time to sight down the fuselage, making sure that the horizontal stabilizer is perpendicular to the fuselage. Same process as before now. Once we're happy with the fit, a thin little bead of glue on each side, keeping that scrap piece of foam handy to smear it into the seam and take off the excess. Do this on all four sides. Got a little glue glob on that, there we go. Now that our tail is on, let's go ahead and get our control horns and hook up our control linkages. Now with our tail in place, we're going to do one last little piece. It looks aesthetics, but it actually gives us great tracking. This is the dorsal fin for our rudder. Just a quick test fit, make sure it fits in and lines up nicely. That looks good. Once we're happy with the fit, and we'll let her dry. All right, let's go ahead and flip this over. And we're gonna go ahead and put our attention now towards the control surfaces and control horns. In our speedboat kit, we have four little control horns. We're only gonna use two of them at the moment, but make sure you don't lose these because we'll use those on the ailerons later. Now in our power packs, we actually include linkage stoppers for you to use if you wish. I prefer not to use linkage stoppers because Z-Bends are far more reliable because you don't have to worry about any screws coming loose. I'm going to show you how to do this with a couple simple bends and a pair of needle nose pliers. The elevator is going to be the easiest to see, so I'm going to go ahead and start with this. The first thing we're going to do without gluing the control horn in is we're going to place down on the control horn right into the elevator. We're going to make sure that the hole of the control horn is directly over the hinge line. That is really important to give you even deflection both up and down. Keeping the elevator neutral or completely flat is really important because when the servo is centered, that's going to give you even deflection both up and down. 
making sure that the control surface is nice and neutral and that the hole is directly over the hinge line, we're gonna take the tip of our thumbnail here and we're gonna hold it just at the very front edge of the hole. It's important to the front edge of the hole because when we bend the wire, it's gonna actually fill in where the hole is. Once you're happy with that mark, lift it up being careful not to move your hand, grip it with your pliers, and bend it 90 degrees inward. Now is a great time to just do one little test fit and we can kind of see that everything is going to line up beautifully. I can now grip this horizontally, leaving about a two millimeter space. And notice that I'm gripping with a thicker part of the pliers so the pliers don't roll. I can now grab this and bend this 90 degrees up. If you're happy with this, now is a great time to go ahead and cut off the excess. So this right here is what we call a modified Z-Bend. The nice thing about a modified Z-Bend is we can use our pliers in the future to actually roll the connection and slide it out. That way if you have to do any repairs or adjustments, you can easily do so. Our next step is to slide on our control horn and once again press it down into place, making sure that the surface is nice and neutral or perfectly flat. Once you're happy with the fit and you've reconfirmed that your servo is nice and centered, we're going to go ahead and move this to the side, put a bead of glue right down in the slot that we created, and then press it in place. Just like our servos, we want to make sure we give this plenty of time to dry because this is your control link. If this goes away, your control goes away. So don't touch this or mess with this for at least a minute and a half. We're going to do the same exact process now on the rudder. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to see this here. I'm going to do my best to try to keep it as visible as possible. But we're going to go ahead and set it in place. Once again, always make sure that our hole is in line with the hinge line. I'm going to go ahead and mark this. Let's see if I can do this left-handed here. We're going to grip it. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees straight up. Just check again and you can see there, it's gonna go right through that hole, which is perfect. Then we're gonna grip it about two to three millimeters above it on the thicker part, 90 degrees straight towards me. And then we're gonna cut it, maybe seven, eight millimeters or about a quarter of an inch from the edge. Slide on our control horn. Press it into place. Notice I always make sure that I check and I double check to make sure that the surfaces are neutral or flat and also the control horn is exactly where I want and the servo is centered before I glue anything down. I'm happy with that. I'm going to slide that out of place. And we're going to press it in. Now when we build the wings later, I just kind of want to give you a little heads up. I'm really excited to show you how we can actually put differential in our ailerons by our control linkages. So when we get to the wing section, please make sure you follow along with me because it's going to make the way the plane flies even better and it's also going to teach you a really cool new skill. So our control surfaces are done, our fuselage is built, but no Cessna would look right without a landing gear. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So for bending our main landing gear piece, we're first going to measure seven and three quarters inches, basically the halfway mark on this wire. For our friends using the metric system, that's roughly 20 centimeters. Now the angle of this is not necessarily super important, but what we're gonna be looking for is about a 90 degree angle right here. We may have to make some slight adjustments based on when we fit it in the plane. Next, we're gonna measure down from the point that we just bent four inches down and make a mark. That's about 10 centimeters for the metric. Once we have our mark, we're going to bend this roughly about 45 degrees, keeping it flat on the same plane. So if it's a little bit off, a little adjustment. There we go. Four inches or 10 centimeters on the other side. Right there. And 45 degrees. Lay it flat, make sure we're happy. Once we sit this up, what we want to see is both axles of the landing gear sitting nice and flat. There will be room to move this and adjust this once we put it on the airplane, but we want to get as close as possible. We're going to measure about three quarters of an inch 
or just under two centimeters from each bend and cut it off. Our main landing gear is done, let's go ahead and fit it in the airplane. With our main landing gear section bent, we're going to go ahead and locate two little index marks. They're going to be right behind the hatch that you see right here, and we're going to go ahead and connect those two marks with our razor blade. To do this, we can easily take a ruler, line up the marks, and oftentimes I try not to take things in one single cut, but a couple. Once you have that mark, make sure you go all the way through. And then using a slight sign motion, we're going to go up about halfway up on each side. There. I'm just going to follow that through right about to there. Now carefully, we're going to go ahead and with a rocking motion, we're going to rock this through. And when I flip this over, you're going to notice it's going to be just on the one side of the bulkhead like you see here. So the neat thing about this bulkhead is it actually gives us the proper angle for the landing gear to sweep forward just like the original Cessna has. This angle is also really important for giving the plane the ability to land and take off easily. Once you're happy with the angle and everything's marked out and nice and neutral, we're going to go ahead and rotate this forward. With our hot glue gun, I'm going to go ahead and drizzle some hot glue right where the landing gear is going to touch the bulkhead. Once you have the point right in the center, I'm just going to take a scrap piece of foam and I'm going to smear that glue right over the landing gear. And I'm going to hold it there for a good minute and a half and let it thoroughly dry. For our nose gear, we're going to take our second included small diameter landing gear wire and we're going to make three bends, each of them being about one inch or just over two centimeters. So we're going to work one inch and we're going to bend a triangle. So we're going to make an equilateral triangle with our three one-inch bends, and it's going to be about 60 degrees. Don't worry about the degrees too much. Just worry about getting your three one-inch bends because we can always go back and make it perfect. Once we got our triangle bent, next I'm going to go ahead and grab this, and I'm going to bend this straight out. Like that. Now that we have that angle, I'm going to grab just ahead of that bend that we made with the thicker part of the pliers, and I'm going to bend almost 90 degrees, maybe about 85 degrees, just letting it sweep slightly forward. Our next bend is going to be about 5 eighths of an inch, or about 2 centimeters. Once we've gone about 5 eighths down, we're going to rotate 90 degrees, and we're going to bend at a 45 degree angle, like this. Next, we're going to go about a quarter of an inch or just under a centimeter. We're going to grip this and we're going to bend this straight down lining up with our main shaft. Our last step is we're going to go down about a half of an inch or just under two centimeters and we're going to bend 90 degrees in line with the shaft making our wheel axle. You can see this is an overwhelming bend if we're going to take it all in one bite. But if you go one angle at a time, just like with any landing gear, you're going to have a very easy experience. I'm going to cut this right around three quarters of an inch. And our nose gear is now done. If you have to make any slight bends to make everything line up and track straight once you put the wheels on, that's not going to be hard at all. The important thing is when we glue this in place, we want to make sure that the plane has a slightly positive angle of attack and not a negative angle of attack. A positive angle of attack is where the leading edge is higher than the trailing edge. This will give us lift and help the plane lift off easily. To glue our nose gear in, we're going to go ahead and take the main portion that's going to be exposed to the landing gear, and we're going to hold that right above the index circle that's on our kit. Once you're happy with the position, go ahead and just give a nice light press down, making a light crease on all three sides. You should have basically an indent of a triangle. All right, once you've made your indent, we're going to trace right along the center of that indent and making sure you don't go through the other side of the paper. All 
Oftentimes what I like to do is just drag a piece of our scrap wire around and open that hole. Then starting with the back end first, lay it in, press it down. If you have to make any kind of little bends, you can do that. There it is. Just lay it in, press it down into place, and make sure you're happy with the fit. Once you're happy with the fit, we'll lift it up one last time. We'll take our hot glue gun and press in the glue down into the bead. Pull a nice healthy bead down. This should slide in even easier now with the hot glue. And what I like to do just lays a nice bead of glue right on the top piece here, keeping a scrap piece of foam handy. Press it in and wipe off the excess. Give this a good minute and a half to dry and your landing gear is now on. No landing gear is complete without wheels, so we're gonna take the wheels that are included in our kit, we're gonna slide them on. You can use wheel collars, but if you really wanna save some weight, I like to take the tip of my glue gun and just put a little tiny glue glob right around the shaft and let it dry. We're going to do this on all three wheels. One thing I like to do is to spin the wheel while the glue lab approaches it. If it does touch it, it won't make a friction fit, but it will make a precision fit. All right, our landing gear is now done. Let's go ahead and put our fuselage to the side and build our wings. So for our main wing pieces, we're gonna have our main wing assembly, and we're gonna have our two internal spars. So just like our fuselage, we're gonna go ahead and prepare the main wing with a double bevel cut along the leading edge. And also we're gonna pull some foam out of a couple key areas to make room for the servos. Let's go ahead and do that now, and then you can copy and make your wing look just like ours. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of open up this cut again. Make sure you don't go through the paper, but if you do, you can always reinforce it with a piece of tape. I'll just focus on the one center section first. Fold it 180 degrees. This double bevel is going to be on the inside of the wing, so you don't have to worry about keeping it very nice. Again, I'm just going to use a little bit of a sawing motion to get this angle here. And we're going to do the same process on the other pieces of the wing as well. While we're carving things out, we're going to go ahead and remove the foam right where the servos are going to go on both sides. I like to cut down as close as the paper as possible without going through. And then I can just take my razor blade and kind of start peeling it up and scraping it away from the paper. There you go. So go ahead and take a moment to make sure that your main wing piece looks just like this, and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step.
So before we glue our main spars in, I'm gonna go ahead and fold the wing over here just to establish a little bit of a form that'll make our assembly easier here in the next couple steps. So the first area we're gonna go ahead and focus on is gonna be the wing center section. This point right here is gonna easily break apart, and if it does, don't worry. Just support them together. We're gonna kind of fold this over, and what I like to do is kind of bend this down to almost go 180 degrees. Let's do this on each panel, just to make sure that we have enough crush. If it's too tight or you feel it ripping, cut your bevel just a little bit more. Notice I'm using my thumb and my fingers here to give that little bit of an airfoil shape, and then I'm using the flats of my hand to fold it over. You never wanna push your foam down with your fingertips or you'll leave dents. There we go. Everything looks really good. Our next step here is we're gonna apply glue right over where the spar goes. Nice thin little bead. And press our spar down in place. Same process on the other side. So we're, before we glue this down, we're gonna do one quick test fit to make sure that everything looks nice. We're gonna to wanna to make sure the focus at this top portion right here between the two creases is parallel with the bottom surface of the wing. We're also gonna to wanna to make sure that the trailing edge here pushes firmly against the foam to make the wing nice and strong. Let's do that on both sides. If for any reason it's too rigid, you can always use your thumb and your fingers to give a little bit more curl, like that. Before we glue our wing down, we're gonna go ahead and prepare the area for our servo extensions. We wanna be able to run our servos easily. This is gonna be a lot easier to do it now, and we can also use the Y harness to make a very clean build. What we wanna make sure that we do is that we plug our signal wire into the signal wire of our Y harness, and that we don't plug it in backwards. So make sure whether it's white or whether it's yellow, that both signal wire and your Y harness line up. Now this plane is designed specifically for our 4.5 gram servos that come along with our A-Pack or our F-Pack. You can also buy these servos separately at our store. There's going to be two little wings on the servos. We're going to go ahead and take the bottom plate of the servo, push it up against the spar, and give a little bit of a downward pressure. That's going to leave us two little indents that we can then take our razor blade and cut a little relief for. Now when we push it down in, the servo should fit nice and flat against the bottom surface of the wing. Make sure that your servo arm is close to your leading edge and not close to your trailing edge. This is gonna make it easier for us to bend our linkages later on. Once you're happy with the fit, we can lift this up, put a small bead of glue right on the main body where the servo is gonna go, and then press it down in place one final time. While we're tacking things down, we can go ahead and put a little drop of glue right over the servo extension and lock that into place. That's gonna keep us from accidentally pulling this and pulling it loose from the servo connection. Same process on the other side. Again, make sure that your servo arm is closest to your leading edge. Once we have that glued in, I'm gonna pass my Y harness straight through the hole on the bottom. And I'm gonna carefully pull it out and let it lay in front of the wing. One last quick test fit to make sure that everything goes down nice and flush. And then making sure that we have plenty of hot glue on our glue gun. I'm gonna put a strip along the leading edge, each seam, my main spar, and my trailing edge. Now this is a small section. If it was a bigger plane, I would break this apart. If you're using a smaller heat gun, you can go ahead and just do your leading edge and then these three seams and then save your trailing edge for later. Here we go. I'm gonna start and stop about a half inch from the edge. Press my nozzle nice and firmly down right along these edges here. 
one swipe right on the top and one swipe right on the trailing edge. We're going to fold this over and we're going to hold this down for about 45 seconds to a minute. All right, our main section is down. We're going to do the exact same process on the outer wing panels. So for the outer wing panels, we're going to use the same exact process as the inner ones, but the only difference is we're going to go ahead and put a bead of glue on the inside of this inner surface here. That way, when we fold this over, the glue will smear down, similar to what we did on our fuselages. We're going to go ahead and take this one step at a time. Again, we're going to do the leading edge. Each seam, notice I'm kind of pushing it down in there. The spar. Trailing edge, and a nice healthy bead right down the side. We can always come back and reinforce it if we have to. This will be a really good source of strength. Now make sure when you're holding down this area specifically, it's going to be a little bit tighter on these edges here. So hold this down a little bit longer, and if it does pop up, you can always go back with a little bit of glue and reinforce it. Let this dry for about a minute and a half and we're going to do the exact same process on the other side. First we're going to fold it over for a test fit. Then we're going to apply a bead of glue on the leading edge. The main spar creases. The trailing edge. The top of the spar. And the side plate of the center portion of the wing. So we now have our main wing shape, but one thing we need is something called dihedral. What dihedral does is it helps the plane self-correct itself by generating more lift on one side or the other based on which direction it's banked. To get the proper angle of dihedral, we're going to use the mini power pod that we built earlier and we're going to slide it in all the way to the point where it stops against the servo. This is going to be the dihedral angle that we need to get the proper flight characteristics for the airplane. Once we're happy with everything and it looks good, we're going to put a nice healthy bead pushing glue right down through the center. We'll lift up the wing, and then we're going to hold the other side firmly against the table, nice and flat. I got my scrap piece of uh, foam board here. I'm just going to go ahead and push that glue right down in the seam, and then I like to give this at least two minutes to dry to make sure it's nice and strong. If you check your outer panels and either one of these don't seem to be glued very well, you can also do the same technique where you put a bead of glue right down the center and then smear it in. Once this is dry, we're going to go over top of this with a piece of tape and your dihedral will be done. Once our glue is dry, we're just going to take a piece of tape right over the top surface and fold it around the bottom. On the back portion of our wing, you're going to notice that there's two notches right here and right here. We're going to go ahead and connect the end points of those two notches together to make the relief cut where the wing is going to sit onto the fuselage. You can eyeball this or you can do it with a ruler. I'm simply going to cut this right across, doing a couple passes. and pop it out. Our main section of the wing is done. Let's go ahead and put our attention now towards our ailerons. Right now, currently the aileron is held neutral because it hasn't been cut out yet. What I like to do is I actually like to put my servo arm and my control horns and make my linkages while everything is held neutral. And then before I glue it in, I'll go ahead and cut the reliefs and also my hinge line and reinforce it. So let's go ahead and start with the uh, control horns first. The control horn we're going to want to use and adjust is going to be this one right here. This is included in our 9051 flight test servo. And we're going to go ahead and remove a little bit of excess because we don't need all of its surface area. We're going to go ahead and cut straight through the second hole right in the middle to shorten this just a little bit. Typically with our servo arms, I always say to go perpendicular with the servo. In this case, we're not going to do that. We're actually going to go ahead and favor the servo arm one notch forward towards the leading edge. What this is going to do is it's going to give us a mechanical advantage. That mechanical advantage is going to raise one aileron higher than the other aileron lowers. This is what we call differential on ailerons. 
This keeps a factor called adverse yaw from being an effect on our airplane. Keeping our control horn handy, we're going to go ahead and slide our push rod right through the servo arm. Make sure you don't move your servo, and if you do, just go ahead and use your centering tool to recenter it. Down below in the description, we have a link on how to center your servos if you've never done that before. We're going to go ahead and take our control horn, making sure that the hole is directly over the hinge line. And just like we showed you before, I'm going to go ahead and mark with my thumb just right on the leading edge of that hole. Grab right above my thumb, bend it 90 degrees. Come back down, check to make sure that it's lined up with the hole nice and neat, which it is. And now I'm going to grab that about three millimeters in on the meaty part of the pliers and bend it straight vertical. You get plenty of push rod material, so if it doesn't look right, go ahead and bend another one until you're happy with it. You can always use our linkage stoppers that are included in our power packs if you wish. I don't want this to snag me if I catch the airplane, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this and rotate it 90 degrees, taking it from a modified Z-Bend to a conventional Z-Bend. Now we can pass this through, check for fit, and everything looks good. At this point we can remove our push rod with the control horn still attached and cut out our ailerons. To cut out our ailerons, we're first going to go all the way through on both sides as you see here. If it's rigid, you can go ahead and make sure you don't cut through the paper on the bottom side, but just give a light score cut so this opens up nice and easy. Once you fold it over 180 degrees, we're going to go ahead and do a single bevel cut on the aileron side. A little bit of a saw motion again, kind of helps you get that angle. Notice I'm not holding the blade perpendicular, but at a sharp angle. This helps it track nice and neat. You may need to cut a little bit of relief, or a little trick I like to do, is to drag some of my extra push rod material and just kind of crush this in on both sides. You don't want this to bind, you want it to move nice and freely both ways. Once we're happy with the motion, we're going to reinforce it with hot glue by pressing the tip right down in the paper and leaving a nice thin bead of glue. Once we put that down, we'll take our scrap piece of foam and we'll scrape as much of it off as we can. Make sure to go over a couple times to get all the extra hot glue off or it could cause bonding later. Give yourself about 45 seconds and let it dry, making sure you don't close it off or it could glue together. Now we can carefully reinstall our push rod. Use the table as our friend to hold the aileron nice and neutral or flat. Check it for fit and glue it in. Just like our elevator on our rudder, give us a good minute and a half to dry, making sure your control link is nice and solid. The last step on this aileron is to lock it in with the screw. The screw for the servos are going to be the shortest screw included in your servo kit. Never neglect this step. That's one aileron done. We're going to do the exact same process now on the other side. So just like the other side, we're going to go ahead and trim our control horn right over top of that center circle. And we're going to install it one notch forward from being perpendicular so that it leans towards the leading edge of the wing. Keeping our control horn handy, we're going to pass the push rod right through that hole, making sure that we don't move, move the servo. Press in your control horn. Use your thumbnail to mark where we need to bend it. Bend 90 degrees. Make sure you're happy with alignment. Then grip it with the meaty part of your pliers about three millimeters in and bend straight up. Cut it about a quarter inch up. And just so we don't snag our fingers, we're gonna go ahead and bend those 90 degrees making a conventional Z-Bend. One last test fit to make sure everything is neutral and our hole is directly over our hinge line. We can remove our control horn, 
cut out our two reliefs on both sides of the aileron. Fold it over 180 degrees and do a single bevel on the aileron. You can use an extra piece of little push rod here just to crush in both edges so you have no binding. Before we glue our control horn in, we're going to push a thin bead of glue right down on the paper and smear it off with a scrap piece of foam, making our reinforced hinge. Make sure you let this thoroughly dry before moving your hinge where you could accidentally glue it shut. One final fit of our push rod and control horn. And once we're happy that everything is still positioned good, we'll glue our control horn down. And screw our servo arm in place. Our wing is now done. We're ready to move on to the fun part, which is installing our radios, installing the wings, and putting the finishing touches on. For this build, we're gonna be using our new FT Radial 1806 motor. So the contents inside of our motor pack, we have our motor, we have a lock nut, we have a really nice little gray spinner. We also have very short motor screws, longer motor screws, and our shortest motor screws. Now it's really important here, depending on your application, if you're building a Mighty Mini with our stock firewall, Take the middle screws and the long screws and put them aside. You don't want to use these screws because they'll hit the windings and hurt the motor. We're going to go ahead and open this up. You'll notice also that we gave you an extra screw, so if you drop it in the carpet, no worries. We're going to take our little 1.5 millimeter screwdriver. We're going to pop it through the back. And I like to kind of hold this and just easily feed one wire at a time right through. two and then there's three. Once we have the wires through you're going to notice that you have wider spacing on two of your screws and shorter spacing on the other. That's just going to match up nice and neat and I'm just going to go ahead and press that into place and start my first screw. Once we have one we'll do the next one and then we'll go ahead and put down the next one. Once we got our two in we can go ahead and snug them up if you want to do four, you're welcome to, but honestly, two is more than enough to hold this motor down. Our next step is to attach the ESC. Our ESC is our electronic speed control. That's what adjusts the speed of your motor. Now you're going to have three wires coming off your speed control right here. We're going to connect each of those three wires, and you don't need to concern yourself about which ones to plug in. When we power up this motor, we're going to see if it spins the right way. If it doesn't, all we need to do is switch any two of the three motor leads. So let's go ahead and power this up. My radio is already pre-bound. Now, flight test, we use the Spectrum line. Every Spectrum radio has a general theme, but you're going to want to look at your user manual to see how to bind it. Some of them, it's a matter of just simply pressing a button while turning it on, while other ones, you actually go in and you use the interface and touch screen to be able to bind it. If you bought a transmitter and a receiver from Spectrum, they will come pre-bound if you buy them together. What we want to look for is a counterclockwise rotation. That's clockwise. So because that's backwards, all we simply need to do is pick any two of the three leads and switch them. There we go. Now you can feel that motor is going the right direction. Our power pod's now done. We're gonna go ahead and install it in our airplane and also connect our servo connections to the receiver. All right, I'm just gonna temporarily disconnect my receiver here. I'm gonna pass my wires right through the power pod holder and out through the back. Take these wires one at a time just to make it a little bit easier on you. 
Once we get our motors in, we're going to slide our power pod in, making sure that the bottom of the power pod rests against the bottom of the power pod holder. Make sure that you don't push your motor too far back and that the prop can easily swing. Easy way to make sure that you're happy with the placement of your prop is to put it on your motor and to back it up and get it within about an eighth of an inch. That looks great. You're going to notice that the uh, silver part of your radial motor is going to be pretty much right in line with the very edge here. It's going to give you perfect spacing. Once you're happy with that, we're going to go ahead and use our barbecue skewer holes on the sides to pass it through and lock in your power pod. Easiest way to fasten down your power pod is once you're happy with the spacing, just go ahead and with a twisting motion, pierce through the side and into your power pod. Now what I like to do is I like to do this on both sides. And I go around to the other side and I pass it through that end. By poking through each individual hole separately, you have a much better chance of being able to pass the dowel rod from one end to the other and have it come clean through. To your front side, just break that off. Then we'll do the same process on the back side, once again making sure that you're happy with the placement and that the power pot is firmly against the bottom of the power pot holder. There it is. With our motor installed, we can go ahead and remake our connection with the throttle port. Again, make sure anytime that you plug things in that you're lining up the data port with the data channel. In this case, our lines are orange. Other wires could be white. While we're at it now, we can go ahead and put attention towards our elevator channel. That'll be right here. And then finally our rudder channel. There it is. And finally, we'll go ahead and bring our wings in. And we'll make that connection as well. Our servo connections can sometimes be tight. Make sure if you ever have to remove these, you grab it by the actual connector and don't pull it by the wires. At this point, we're going to go ahead and check our controls. Make sure that your prop is off so there's no way that you could possibly rev up your motor and cut yourself. All right, our transmitter's on first. Next, we're just going to go ahead and plug our battery in. And what we want to check here is we want to make sure we check our throws. Just to kind of make things a little bit easier, I'm going to kind of loosely put the plane together and point it away from us. What we're going to want to see is the plane pointing away from us is when we pull back on the stick to go up that the deflection goes up. This is backwards so we're going to need to reverse this channel. Let's go ahead and check out our ailerons too. When we raise to the right, our right aileron should go up and that's correct. And when we push our rudder to the right, it should turn right. So right now all we need to reverse is our elevator. Every model is a little bit different. This one's incredibly easy. We simply hit the rolling pad, go down to servo setup, We select travel, go over until we see reverse, and then we just roll over one at a time until we see elevator. One press and we're good to go. We can go back. And now when we pull back, this goes up. Now if you follow along with our servo throws, all of your throws should be perfect roughly between 12 and 16 degrees. If you like a little bit more aggressive flying, you can always go back in and adjust your push rods or adjust the travel on your transmitter. But if you're looking to fly just like how you saw the review video go, this setup will be perfect for you. Now that we're happy with the throws and how everything moves, let's go ahead and route our wiring, clean everything up, and glue on our wings. With our new 20 amp ESC, you're going to notice it's not only gone from a 12 amp to a 20 amp, but it also has this port here. What this port is, is it gives you accessory power that's direct battery voltage. It is filtered, and so if you put a three cell here, you'll get three cell power. If you put a two cell, you'll get two cell. This is not a five volt source. If you want a five volt source, you need to take it from the receiver. Let's go ahead and put our, our ESC all the way up in the front nose, right inside that power pod. There we go. I'm gonna leave us just enough. And just so I can access my server ports, I'm gonna put a little drop on the top. And I'm going to kind of glue this right where the baggage compartment would go on the Cessna. Once that's dry, we can loosely kind of guide our wires up around the receiver, keep them clear from the antenna. Get the antenna right there. And now we can position our wings on. Your wings should nicely fit right inside, kind of nestled up against the canopy, centered up. 
And if you sight straight down it, what you want to look for is to make sure that your wings are parallel and even to the tail. Once you're happy with that fit and everything looks good, I'm going to slide the wing back. I'm just going to take a little razor blade. I'm going to cut a slight little bevel right here. Just let the wing kind of nest up firmly against the window. If your wing is uneven for any reason, you can go ahead and take some sandpaper or a razor blade and sand down one side or the other until it's nice and parallel to the tail. All right, the fit looks great. I'm really happy with that. I'm going to slide this all the way back and I'm going to focus some hot glue right on the top of the fuselage right here. We're going to hold this down, checking regularly for both fit and angle for about 45 seconds. For a little added rigidity, we can come back with a little bit of glue on both sides of the fuselage and lock the wing in place. With our wing now on, we're going to go ahead and put our attention towards the struts. The struts are not needed for strength, it's purely aesthetic, but it does really make the Cessna look great. To prep our struts, we're going to go ahead and score it down to the paper on both lines, like you see here. You're going to notice that the one line is not evenly in the middle. It's actually on the edge. We're going to peel off the shorter side that you see here. Pushing the strut up in the top hole here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut it down just so it'll lay in here. I like to kind of sight this up just like you see here. Make sure when we cut this, it'll fit nice and neat. Once we've made our cut, we can always go back and we can give a quick test fit. We're okay if this is just a touch loose because that's where the barbecue skewer is going to come into play. Make sure you adjust it so you have a nice fit, just like you see here. Our next step is to go ahead and take our barbecue skewer and we're going to cut it about a quarter inch long on both sides. A little bit of glue. And we'll press it in place. There we go. We're going to follow up with one other little tiny bead of glue. And just like how we do our fold over on our foam, we're going to roll this 90 degrees. Give it a second. And then right back down against the table, press it nice and flat and dragging that paper away from you. Now we can take our strut to the airplane carefully fit it in. It's a little bit on the long side. You do have a little bit of flex. You can always cut it just a touch shorter. And with our strut cut out, we're just going to press it up into place and stitch it down. Once we're happy with the fit, a little drop of glue on both sides will lock it in permanently. Make sure you turn your struts parallel to the wing. After about 45 seconds, we're going to do the same process on the other side. Cut it the length. Make sure that it fits. After checking the fit, we'll glue our barbecue skewer in that we've adjusted. Last but not least, we'll finish off our strut. Last but not least, we'll fit our strut in, check the fit, and lock it down with a drop of glue. Our wings are now on, our struts are on. Let's go ahead and put our attention towards the battery hatch and finish off this project. The location of the battery is on the bottom of the fuselage. You're going to notice that there's two line hatches and two L-shaped hatches on the top. This is going to be your hinge line, and this is going to be the top hatch that you need to do a cut through. The easiest way to do this is to connect the lines. You can use a razor blade or freehand it with each other. Take your time and do multiple cuts 
making sure you don't pass too deeply and cut any wires on the inside. Once you cut cleanly through all three sides, we're just going to use the razor blade and gently pry this up. And open up our hatch. To give our hatch a little bit of reinforcement, we're going to take our hot glue gun and we're going to place a bead of glue right on the hinge line, just like reinforcing the hinge on the control surfaces. Take a little tiny scrap piece of foam and smooth it out. Make sure this thoroughly dries before you move on or you may accidentally glue your hatch shut. While this is drying open, I can take a little piece of scotch tape, or in this case packing tape, and I can make a pull tab. To make a pull tab, we're going to rip off about three quarters of an inch. We're going to take the two inch wide layer and we're going to fold it over, creating a non-sticky portion right here. We can then take that right to the very edge. And now whenever we close it, we have a little tiny tab that we can pull it open with. One last little tip here to kind of give yourself a nice locking feeling is to go ahead and put a little drop of glue, not pushing in on both sides. This is going to make two little individual bumps that when they lock down or come down into contact with those little L-shaped etches are going to kind of tab right into the fuselage and give you a nice streamlined look. Give this about a minute to dry. All right, so now that closes nice and neat, our next step is to go ahead and place our battery. Now we're using an 850 milliamp two cell battery. It's very important. If you want to use a three cell, you're going to have to go smaller, but I'd strongly recommend stay in this two cell range. And also your battery is going to be your center of gravity. We're going to go ahead and slide our battery in and press it all the way until it's just about flush. If your battery compartment is a little tight, run this back and forth a couple different times to get it nice and loose. Avoid trying to pull too hard on your leads to pull it out. You're not going to need any Velcro or any other attachments. It's going to stay perfectly in place. Once your uh, battery is installed, go ahead and put your attention towards the wings. We're going to place our fingers underneath the wing just ahead of the crease that you see here. When we do that, we should see the nose pointing slightly nose down, and that indicates that the balance is perfect. Keep in mind, everyone has a slightly different flying style, and I'd strongly recommend that you fly it a touch nose heavy before trying to move your battery back or your CG back any further. A tail heavy airplane is far less stable than a nose heavy airplane. The center of pressure will move back on the wing and cause the instability of the boundary layer to break free prematurely. <laughs> you not put that in. I may not be right, but I'm pretty sure I am. <laughs> Now that our throws are good, our center of gravity has been established and we are ready to fly, let's go ahead and reinstall our props one last time and take it out for a maiden flight. All right, friends, we're ready to go ahead and take the FT commuter out for its maiden. Couple things you always want to keep in mind. You always want to launch into the wind. You want to make sure your CG is proper and your controls are right. If this is the first time you've ever flown a plane before, we have a really great video called Six Quick Tips for a Successful First Flight. It'll kind of give you a last minute checklist to make sure you have the best odds to have a great experience on your maiden. Now this plane can be hand launched or it can be taken off if you have a nice flat surface. We're blessed with a little runway here. Let's go ahead and put it on the ground and see how she flies. This plane will do all your basic maneuvers. You can even fly it as FPV platform and chase through the trees or feel like you're really in the cockpit. There you go. All the way back, we still have nice control, and she comes down nice and docile. Bring 
waiting for landing. All right, friends, I want to thank you for being part of the Flight Test family. Big thank you to Ben Harbour for sharing his knowledge, his talents, and his passion with others, and also his beautiful story about him and his grandfather and his family. I want to encourage you, if you haven't gotten into the hobby, please consider this as a very first step to really great trainer, great experience with building. One thing we love is families getting together, making memories flying. This is a really great way to do so. We'll see you next time.